Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and I don't know why I'm wearing my headset, to be honest with you, because a good start. Um, let's just ignore that. Um, yes, it's me, Don Fanatic, and we are here for week two of the NSTL. Uh, it's week two, we are up against Dark Devil 26 and his Trenton Thunderous. Um, the drafts are right beneath me. As you can see, uh, my team, you may be familiar with by now if you've watched my draft analysis and week one. Quick recap of week one. Um, if you want to go back and watch it, then do it now because I'm about to spoil it for you. Um, we did get a 6-0 win. Um, so it's like the perfect start um, to the season. Now, this game, um, I was a lot less confident going into because uh, I feel that Dark's team is absolutely terrifying. It's fat, you may argue as fat as mine. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, he's got so much offense, he's got so much fat. Um, and I think, it, like, the matchup was in his favor um, in this game. Uh, I'll read I'll read his draft out to you. Uh, it's it's Tapicoco, which is a Z a Mega Gallade, Skarmory, a Mamoswine, Milotic, Blacephalon, Skuntank, Tangler, Drudigan, Lickitung, Alolan Raichu. So he's got Alolan Raichu to abuse the electric terrain, as if Tapicoco isn't bad enough to abuse the electric terrain. He's got Mega Gallade, which is just Mega Gallade. It does Mega Gallade things. Skarmory, you know, Hazards, Mamoswine, Powerful Stab, um, Earthquake, an Icicle Crash, and Priority and Ice Shard. Milotic is just fat, and my team doesn't particularly deal well well with Milotic. Um, Blacephalon can be scary. Um, I did realise though if you wanted to get speed boosts with it you have to run like no special attack investment so um, Blacephalon wasn't as scary as I first sort of thought once I actually started prepping for things. Um, Skuntank is a potential defogger. Tangler is Tangler. Uh, Dradigan I'm expecting you know if he does bring it it'd be Rocks. Um, Rocky Helmet. Um, what's its face? Um, Lickitung is potentially going to come because I haven't got a fighting type um, and you know I, I, while I've got knockoff users that thing would be scary and Lolan Raichu actually does a shit ton to my whole core. So we're going to go over the team. I know last time my team builder was like nearly half an hour long or something stupid so we're going to try and shorten it down this time. Um, First up, we have got my fetish, the Nihilego. Um, there's like a recurring theme where a lot of my team is quite fat this week. Nihilego is my late game cleanup. Uh, it has the opportunity, if I can keep it healthy, to just win. Um, we've got Sludge Wave Power Gem. I believe half his team just dies to like plus one of that move, which is great. Grass Knot uh, at plus one can kill a max defense. Milotic after rocks, I think, and it will just guarantee kill uh, Mamo Swine anyway. And Charge Beam um, it lets me hit the Scarm switch in, if that is a switch in. Um, it lets me potentially get the plus one with Charge Beam. Um, and as you can see from my EVs, I am running Beast Boost, so I get the speed boost. So that's why I'm running Charge Beam, because if I can get the special attack boost with it, then um, Nihilego is going to be good to go uh, in a position where it can actually just sweep my opponent which is fantastic um, because these four moves like literally cover his whole team super effective bar the alone and Raichu which will probably just die to a plus one sludge wave anyway Lickitung is an issue here Drodigan would die to a sludge wave Tangler would die to a sludge wave Skuntank would probably die to a power gem plus Ephelon will die to a sneeze Milotic is an issue but again Grass Knot Mamoswine dies to Grass Knot Skarmory can die to a plus one power gem if it's Viz Death I think after Rocks Mega Gallade while bulky assuming it's offensive it will probably die to a Sludge Wave and Tapu Koko will die to a Sludge Wave so if I get to plus one I have the opportunity just to power through his team if I get to plus two I have the opportunity just to sweep his team to be honest with you because if he doesn't have a Scarfer or he has something which is a Scarfer and slower than my Nihilego then I just outspeed his whole team the only thing he has that can hit me is Shadow Sneak and Gallade uh, and Ice Shard and Mamo. And while Adamant Ice Shard does do like 50% to me, um, as long as I'm over 50%, then I'm fine. As you can see, I've got some HP investment because the EVs I had to run specifically like this so I can get the speed boost. And I wanted to hit as hard as I could as possible. So yeah, that's Nihilego. Next up is Rotom Heat, and I'd say it's probably one of the more important mons this game for me. Um, it's, it's offensive again. Um, with Volt Switch, Overheat, Thunderbolt, Will-O-Wisp, because his team really struggles against it. Like, Mamoswine dies to Overheat, even through um, Thick Fat, I think, after Rocks. Um, Milotic, obviously, will take a good chunk from Volt Switch and Thunderbolts. Um, Skarmory is, obviously, weak to both my stabs. Um, Coco is going to set the Electric Terrain up for me, so I can actually just kind of spam Electric moves against it. Um, 
yeah, he's got Mega Glade, which will still take a butt ton. I've got Wisp for that. Um, Blacephalon won't appreciate an electric type move at all. Skuntank, neither. Tangle definitely won't, even with an Aviolite. Dredigan, yeah, could do, and Lickitung could do too. Um, but also, this thing like checks a lot of his team defensively as well. Um, so the Coco, obviously, it resists both stabs, but with the electric terrain, it kind of becomes a null point, and electric moves just do a ton anyway. Um, Resist Mammo Swine's stab or is immune to ground and resist ice. Um, obviously, the issue here is this is probably my best thing to take on Milotic, and Milotic um, does beat this thing 1v1 purely because of how fat it is, um, and it gets recover, obviously. Um, yeah, what else is there? Dredagon, no, sorry, Tangler rather. Um, obviously, and Lolan Raichu's electric moves. So, this thing can resist a lot, but it does a lot of damage, so I, I did ultimately decide to go with an offensive build rather than defensive. Um, the speed was, for a max speed, Milotic? Just in case he bought some crazy max speed, max special attack competitive set because of Landorus. Um, so I decided to bring that speed. Probably in hindsight, you know, not needed, but you can never be too safe when this thing is like so important um, for the game. Um, and then the rest of the EVs are pretty self-explanatory, really. Next up, we have Slowbro. Slowbro is my answer to Mega Glade. I have the Cold Berry for knockoff. He could run X Scissor, but if he is running X Scissor, I can literally switch into four of my six, mo uh, five other Mons to take it. Even Ordino would, but why would I switch an Ordino in on the Mega Glade? Who knows? Scald Psychic Slack or Flame for a really simple move set. Um, yeah, I can't really touch Milotic, but. Slowbro can't really touch Milotic anyway. I don't think there's any point in me running Toxic because he will be running some kind of like Flame Orb or something, I suspect, because I've got so many powerful physical hisses. I think he'll bring the Flame Orb um, Marvel Scale set. Like I said, there's a potential for competitive because I do have Intimidate, but I feel like that's more important for him to being defensive. Um, but yeah, the rest of the moves just kind of hit his team quite nice. Scald is always nice to have a burn chance. Psychic is just a nice stab. Um, Flamethrower is there for the Skarm. Because um, if it's Spadef Scald, really doesn't do too much. But, you know, while I can get a burn, Flame Pro is nice. I think I can 2 it KO it potentially if it's a Fizz Death. Um, quite comfortably, actually, I think. So, yeah, um, I, I feel like this moveset was just quite easy for me to build. Slowbro is just always going to be max defense for me because, like I said, it is my Mega Gallade answer. Um, don't really have much else to say about Slowbro, to be honest. Next up, we have got the Ordino, my Spadef answer. Um, my draft really doesn't have much for Tapu Koko. Um, this was like my best answer outside of um, Rotom Heat. Yes, Nihilega can tank the fairy hits, but he could easily be physical Koko, and that would just destroy Nihilego with you know Wild Charge or Thunder Punch, something like that. Um, so this thing was like my best answer. Um, well, I am Knock Off Return, Wish Healing Wish. I had a real tricky time trying to figure out what moves I wanted to run on this thing offensively. Knockoff I figured in the end because Blacephalon might be his switch in to this or he might see it as an opportunity to switch in and if I can knock off a choice scarf if he has some set up variant then it won't really scare me because I have my um oh, what do I have? I feel like I have Scarf Lando. I haven't gone over it yet but I would be able to take that thing out quite easily. Um, return just for damage wish and healing wish um, in case Nihilego or Rotom or either sort of do anyone basically is really low because all my other guys are really important in this game um, if I can healing wish them back up to full health then that'd be fantastic um, but again quite straightforward I need it for the uh, Tapu Koko I need it for the Blacephalon um, I may I mean I'd probably lose 1v1 against a Milotic with this set but Never mind. Um, I don't think in any world Ordino would win unless it was Calm Mind, and I just don't think I could fit Calm Mind into this team, um, especially when Knockoff was so useful for me. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of here to be a special tank. Um, Amoongus was a maybe. Originally, I was going to bring all three because the Regenerator Core would have been really nice. Um, but then I looked at his team, and Coco can kill me with Brave Bird. Gallade can kill me with Stab. Skarmory is super effective against me. Mamoswine is super effective against me. Blacephalon is super effective against me. Uh, Alone and Raichu is super effective. There's way too many things here that can just take on the uh, Moongus. And I already feel like I have things that can take on the Milotic, which is probably what it would have been there for in the first place. So I don't think it was too important for me this game. Next up, we have got Celesteela. Um, S slash substitute leech seed flamethrower. The only thing that he I can't leech seed on his team is the Tangler, and Tangler is weak to my stab in air slash, and it, it won't take two air slashes at all. Um, 
Substitute, um, I've, the EVs in this thing are so, I take hits as well as possible from Mammoth Swine, because this thing takes Mammoth Swine on for days, um, as well as Slowbro. I wasn't actually, I was in two minds about Mammoth Swine coming, because obviously I have got the Landorus, and Ice Shard is lovely for a Landorus, um, but I also do have so many ways of dealing with Mammoth Swine defensively as well, um, I wasn't too sure if it would be coming or not. But yeah, I've got the EVs here, so... Scored from Milotic doesn't break sub if he isn't invested. Um, I think I'm thinking he's probably going to be invested in defences, so I don't expect him to be able to break my sub. Um, Leech seed, like I said, I can just spam it pretty much. Um, substitute is substitute, like I said, it can't, it's not broken by a lot of things. I don't think Ice Shard can break it. I think Ice Cold Crash can, um, but I can then just you know keep substituting and Leech seed left Davis will pretty much keep me where I was. Um, I don't think I could really afford to run. Um, Protect on this set because I needed the flamethrower for the Skarm because otherwise Skarm would just be able to 1v1 me. Now, yes, Skarm wouldn't be able to do much to me, but I really just didn't fancy sitting there. Um, and the flamethrower would also do damage to... Who would it do damage to? Uh, nothing else, really, other than Air Slash. It would hit the Alone and Raichu, I guess, and the Tapu Koko for a bit of damage. But if them things are in and I'm not behind a sub, I ain't staying in anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's Salus Sealer, pretty straightforward. The bulk is there just to live a few hits. And so substitutes aren't broken, and the game plan is just to sit there and spam Leech Seed. As boring as it sounds, and how anti my style it is, it just like does a number to his team. So I felt like it was a really good bring uh, this week. And then finally, we have got the Choice Scarf Landorus. Now, I sat here thinking, uh, sorry, I just loaded Discord up instead of the team builder. Um, it was really hard for me to figure out what item I wanted to bring on this Landorus. I figured I would want to bring Landorus because he has got Coco. Um, Skarmory is an issue, he has got the Mammo. Milotic could be an issue as well. Um, the Blacephalon dies to a sneeze, but again, this thing can check it really nicely. Um, like, this thing offensively does quite well this game other than the Skarm. And the Skarm is something I feel like I might struggle killing if I don't get it with Rotom quite early game. Um, but if I can get rid of the Rotom, he really struggles to switch into Earthquakes, even like if he's Flame Orb um, Milotic, I think. If I get him to below like 70% after rocks and burn, and like he can't take two earthquakes. Um, U turn is obviously there for momentum. Stone Edge is there for Skarm, so if I can get Skarm to about 60% after rock, uh, with, and then obviously hit it with rocks rather, I think two Stone Edges um, would kill max defense, and even then I have a chance to get high crit chance. So um, that's kind of my answer. Stealth Rocks are huge for me this game because um, what's his. He's got Coco for removal, Skarmory for removal. Um, Skun Tank for removal. He's basically only got Defog, so he has to get rid of his own, but Stealth Rocks will help me hugely turn um, lots of potential rolls to KOs with my Nihilego later on in the in the game. So it's really important that I get my Stealth Rocks up as quick as possible, uh, if I can, that is. Um, so that's pretty much the team. Um, hopefully I've managed to condense it and it still makes sense to you as to why I've bought what. I'm sure you guys have made your own summary up anyway because you can see the teams below. But without further ado, let's just swap into the game. Okay, so here we are with the game versus Dark Devil and his uh, Trent and Thunderous. His team's pretty much what I expected. I know I didn't actually say what I expected. I wasn't expecting... Um, uh, Mammo Swine, I was kind of surprised to see and not surprised to see. I mean, yeah, pretty much is what I expected to see. Dredigan was a maybe. I honestly thought Lickitung might come over that because he could run Stealth Rocks on Mammo or Skarm. Um, and what I failed to see here is because he has those, I didn't really identify the um, Dredigan as a potentially offensive set, which, spoilers, it kind of might be um, a bit later on. But I'll, we'll go over that when we get into the game. Um, looking at the team matchup, though, it's definitely a winnable game. Definitely a winnable game. Um, it's still, I think, a hard matchup for me, um, and I'm having to bring a lot of bulk, which might mean he, his momentum could carry him through the game. Um, but I will say this now, um, this game, RNG was seriously never in my favour. Like, any kind of hacks went against me, and any kind of hacks I just couldn't get. Um, so, bearing in mind with that, if I sound a bit off during this commentary, you'll know why, because after this game it took me a solid day to get over it. Um, but we'll, we'll go into this game. So, um, I do decide to leave off a Rotom Heap because it's kind of like my best matchup against most of his things. It leaves with a Coco, and I'm like, okay, I'll click Volt Switch here. Um, but he actually has Hidden Power Rock, I believe, or Water, something like that. Um, and that was kind of ow, because I really wasn't expecting something like that. And that thing was so important for this game, it's now weak. 
and it might force me to use Healing Wish a bit earlier and on that Rotom. Now, it's not a bad thing to use it on, by all means, because looking at his team, you can see um, it hits three of his six things super effective with its stab, and it can just Volt Turn on the rest, so... And Volt Turn, Volt Switch on the rest. So, this does give me a chance to go into my Landorus, and I believe I'm... I mean, his switch is going to be obvious. I wouldn't have brought this thing in. Uh, although I do know he's not Hidden Power Ice now, um, he might think that... Uh, he, he might not know that I'm Scarfed. Um, he might just think that I have a safe switch in here. Um, and I do, because Dazzling Beam, I mean, he'll probably do a decent amount to me. He is Life Orbed, but he probably doesn't want to run the risk of losing his Coco in case I am Scarfed. So I am going to just click U turn here. He is going to switch out into his Skarmory. Skarmory is like an obvious switch, so there's not much point. Oh, sorry, I do get my Stealth Rocks up, but there's no point in me um, clicking Earthquake there because that thing is so obviously weak. Uh, he does go for the Defog here, which is frustrating. Uh, you'll see later on these Stealth Rocks, if I'd have kept them up, would have mattered hugely. Um, but Skarm is my chance to actually kind of just, um, uh, I can't even think what I'm trying to say, uh, get some leftovers recovery. Now obviously I do miss the Will-O-Wisp which is really frustrating and this does actually cost me a Rotom. Now it's that point I was like brilliant, okay well people miss moves, Will-O-Wisp isn't the highest accuracy move, that's fine. But what it does do is it kind of makes me want to think I'm going to go for a second Will-O-Wisp. Because so I'm thinking here he's going to set up his rocks, expecting me to Volt Switch out or just Switch out normally. Um, not clocking that he has two other rockers. Um, and I was like, not many people bring Drudigan for any other reason other than the Rough Skin kind of set. So I was like, okay, I'll set up Will-O-Wisp and then he can't kill me, that's fine. What I didn't see was, in the game, when this thing came in it had Mole Breaker. Um, and th that just completely bypassed my mind. Like, I saw it pop up. I literally saw it, but it completely bypassed my mind that he was then going to click Earthquake this turn. Um, so I am going to get Leftovers Recovery and Above Health, and I'm like, cool, if I burn him, um, which I do, I'll be able to take this thing on, Volt Switch out, that's fine. But he's actually Lumberry, and then he uh, Earthquakes me. So yeah, if I'd have got that burn off turn, like the turn before, I might have been like, okay, he's Lumberry, he's not Rocky Helmet. It might have made me take more attention. I can't like, say, I mean, there I accept I played stupid around this Dragon with that Rotom. Rotom was so important against this team, and we're down 6-5 already. Um, so, I'm going to bring in my Slowbro now, because this thing really can't do too much to me. He's actually going to run Toxic, though, and Toxic my Slowbro, which is annoying. So, I go for Psychic, do a solid chunk, it's a free hit KO, um, and he does now get his Stealth Rocks up. So he's Mold Breaker, Stealth Rocks, Toxic, Earthquake, and I'm assuming probably something like Dragon Tail. Um, so that's really frustrating, however I do weaken that thing down, he now goes into his Milotic. I'm just going to click Psychic again, um, and here we do see that he is going to burn himself, which is great. So he's not leftovers, he's going to lose a bit of health every turn, but the sad thing is he now um, has his uh, Marvel Scale active, and um, I don't have much to take it on. So obviously here he does go for Scald, and um, he gets the burn, obviously, so that's a Willow Miss and a Scald burn. Um, he is going to switch out here because he doesn't really know what I'm going to do. I'm going to click Knock Off. No, I'm not going to click Wish. I can take any hit from this thing at this range of health, uh, even if it's Specs. So I'm going to just uh, click Knock Off here. He goes to the Fire Blast. With the Wish up, I'm confident I can take this thing on 1v1. Uh, I go for the Knock Off. It doesn't do as much as I thought it would. Um, there might, there's probably a lot of HP in this thing because uh, he might not want some special attack or speed investment on it. Um, but we saw a Scarfed. He's going to click Fire Blast again. Uh, I believe here I click Wish. Um, kind of gives me like a safe switch into my Nihilego because obviously Nihilego's bulk on the special side is disgusting. Um, I'm going to take Stealth Rocks and I'm going to take a Shadow Ball I believe. Um, he did predict the switch, that's fine, but it really doesn't do anything. Now here he gets the Special Defense drop, which again is really annoying. So that's a School Burn, a Special Defense drop and a Willow Miss for me so far. Uh, this part of the game is crucial here. Um, really, really, really not sure why he went into Mammo Swine. Um, because I could easily click Power Gem and two-shot this thing. Um, yes, I probably wouldn't have stayed in for the second Power Gem, because I wouldn't know if he was Scarfed or not. However, knowing that his Placephalon was Scarfed, it's probably safe to assume this is Life Orb or something. And if it is Scarfed, um, it would potentially give me, like, a chance to bring in Celesteela for free or Landorus for free, so I'm thinking it's probably not going to be. But if I had clicked anything other than Charge Beam there, I would have two-shot this thing. So I really don't agree with that play, but it does work out for him, as you'll see a bit later on. So um, I can't leave Nihilego in here because I can't one-shot this thing. And if he Sash, then obviously Grass Knot wouldn't kill anyway, even if it was a crit. So I can't leave this thing in, it's too important for me late game. But he's now seen Charge Beam, he's seen my tech on it, and it's really frustrating. Um, this turn he goes for the knockoff. So actually I could have stayed in, 
Um, I would have lost my expert belt, which would have been quite annoying. Um, but he can't stay in with Mammoth Swine here because he doesn't want to take any damage on it. Um, and I'm going to click Slack Off because I beat that Mammoth Swine 1v1 now. He's knocked off my uh, Cobra Berry. So in comes the Milotic, he's going to click Recover. And I'm just going to stay in and click Psychic, hoping I get some Spadef Drops. Um, of course I don't get any Spadef Drops because why would I? I don't get any luck this game. Um, but I'm going to go into my Cellar Stealer because the Cellar Stealer is built for this thing. Um, what I should have done was I should have stayed in and clicked Psychic again so I could bring Celestina on turn where he uh, recovers. But again, he scalds me and burns me, um, which negates my leftovers, which means Substitute is going to be a lot harder for me to work with this game. However, I'm going to click Leech Seed. And thankfully, I hit the Leech Seed, which is something. Um, and now I'm going to be recovering health at a good rate against this um, Milotic. Um, I believe I click... I'm going to click Leech Seed and I click Substitute here. So I'm going to click Leech Seed because I do want to get as much health back as possible. Obviously this Tapu Coco is going to be killing my Substitute with a Thunderbolt, which is fine. But it's taking some leftovers damage. If I had Heavy Slam, I would have probably clicked that here and this Coco would probably be dead. Um, but we're not running it this week. We are running Air Slash and whatnot. So the Seed is still huge for me this game. I can still Wish. I can still um, Healing Wish this thing. But actually, like, I had nothing to switch into this Coco. I think it's sort of in hindsight he could have probably switched into the Landorus, um, but he does have that Skarm. Um, I believe this turn I'm going to click uh, U-turn because Skarm is always going to be a switch in. And this is the turn where I, this is the time where I think I can bring in my Nihilego and uh, start clicking. No, sorry, it's where I'm going to bring in my Celesteela because it's my best chance to actually uh, take some hits. That is 12%. That is a lot to a Celesteela from a Skarmory. I'm surprised. Um, I see this is my best opportunity to click uh, Leech Seed again. He might bring in the Coco, but he brings in the Milotic, which is fine. And I think this is the point of the game where he finds out he can't break my substitute. Um, I think I, I would win this uh, 1v1 overall, because every time he recovers, I just get a free substitute off. Um, but Leech Seed will just wear him down constantly. Um, I'm slower because I can't get any Air Slash flinches, which is fine. I wasn't expecting to be fast in this thing anyway. He is going to have to click Recover this turn, so I believe I'm going to click Substitute. Um, knowing full well that Burn will not take me out this turn coming up. Um, and we're just going to kind of play this game for a bit where I'm going to sap a bit of health away from him. This is where he's going to find out score doesn't break my Substitute. No, it's not. He's going to click Recover. He's just kind of letting me sap away at his Milotic. Um, I really wish I had Giga Drain over Flamethrower in this matchup. Um, because actually, I still wouldn't have been able to touch the Skarm, but again, I could kill the Skarm with something else. Um, Skull doesn't break my sub, which is fantastic. Um, I do air slash this thing, slowly whittling it away. Um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a point where he's going to have to switch out, or I'm going to have to switch out eventually. I honestly don't remember what happens here. Like I said, it just kind of happens for a few turns. He's recovering. He's letting me get loads of health back, which is lovely, because um, considering I was down to 12% on my Celesteela at one point, um, he really hasn't gotten anywhere with his Milotic. I am getting somewhere with my Celesteela. Um, it, it's a fairly good trade for me. Um, back up to 80% now, 75 after the burn. This does mean I can take some hits from the Mamoswine better. He finally breaks my sub, um, but I click Substitute again, knowing he's going to click Scald there. Um, and we're kind of rinsing and repeating again. Again, if he wants to switch out, that's fine. I'll just click Leech Seed on whatever he switches out to. Um, and this turn he does go into the Coco. If I had to click, like, Air Slash or something here. That, oh, I do click Air Slash here, sorry. If I had to click Leech Seed there, I would have been in a much better position. Um, I don't honestly know why I didn't. Maybe I wasn't predicting the switch at the time. But he does click Thunderbolt here. It does break my sub, and I'm just going to take this opportunity to um, actually just flamethrow this thing. Because I don't want a sub that would bring me down to a low amount of health, and if I had to switch out, then um, I'd take some Stealth Rocks upon entry. I do get the Defense Boost, so he's really looking like he hasn't got anything other than this Blacephalon to take me out at this point. I'm going to go into Slowbro because I'm sacking off here, which is really hard for me to take because... Um, Mammo Swine. This checks Mammo Swine so nicely. Here, um, my opponent makes a play which I'm not sure about. Like, click Shadow Ball because I can't switch into my Nihilego. He doesn't know I'm not Scarfed. Um, although, seeing Charge Beam, you should probably assume I'm not. He clicks Psy Shock on my Slow I don't know why, but um, he does. And I live. And obviously, because the Blacephalon is Blacephalon, Scored is going to take this thing out. Now, I don't know because of this. I would say misplay. I don't know his. I don't know his motive behind it, so I can't say it's a misplay. Um, that gives me a huge way back into the game. Here, I should have gone into my um, Celesteela. Oh, and actually, I'm going to Landorus. Sorry, um, I get the Intimidate off. 
and then I'm going to go into my um, Zealous Sealer. I did that because one, I want Intimidate, two, I don't need the Choice Scarf. I outspeed his whole team uh, now, which is lovely. I'm going to go into Slowbro here because this means I can now slack off against it, and he's slowly whittling himself down with the uh, Life Orb, which is now revealed. Um, this is where Stealth Rocks would have come in handy. Um, and uh, also if I had to click Charge Beam because he would now be at a really low percent. Um, I am now at a really good amount of health. He does click Recover here. I'm going to click Psychic. What I should have done in at this point of the game was go into my Celesteela and rinse and repeat the Leech Seed. Because I'm what I'm going to do here is lose my Slowbro because of the Toxic and me trying to weaken this Milotic. And that was really stupid of me because this Slowbro... Um, checked his Mammoth Swine incredibly well. I still have the Intimidate. Like, Landorus isn't doing much for me this game anymore. Um, but what I do here is stupid. I should have clicked Psychic then as well because I would have got my Lytic down a lot lower. Um, and he's going to recover here and Toxic is going to take me out. I should have switched out there as well. Again, I was given so many opportunities to switch out and a free switch into my Celeste Dealer. Um, but I just didn't take it. And down goes Slowbro. So that was my misplay. Yes, I accept that was a misplay. On my end, but it does give me a chance to go into Nihilogo and I click Grass Knot. I'm gonna get my speed boost. Now, this is where if I had special attack boost, I would be so in right now. Um, I'm gonna click Power Gem here because actually, uh, like it two hit KOs and I don't need the special attack boost anymore. But he has Iron Head and that's really upsetting for me. I can live one Stealth Rock switch in, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to look at Power Gem and he's going to sack off his Dredicon. I'm thinking I'm in a really good position here. He's going to bring in his Mammoth Swine, that's fine. I'm going to go into Landorus so I'm going to sack it off. Because um, I'm going to get the Intimidate off on it. Um, I don't need it for Skarm. And it doesn't help with Mammo anymore. Lando is pretty much redundant at this point. I should be able to win this game outright with just Celesteela at this point. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to go into Celesteela. And I am going to click uh, Leech Seed, I believe. Um, because if he goes into Skarm, that's fine. He can't kill me with the Mammoth Swine. And the Skarm is now Leech Seeded. I'm like, okay, if you are um, Whirlwind, that's absolutely fine. You can Whirlwind me out. Um, but he actually switches back into the Mammo here. I'm going to go for the Flamethrower. This is where Stealth Rocks would have been crucial. It would have brought him down to the point where he couldn't actually... He could only get two more Life Orb hits off and he wouldn't be able to kill me. Here he goes for the Icicle Crash. Flame Orb, Flamethrower will kill. And he flinches me. Yet again, this game, the Hacks Gods screw me over. This was enormous because he can now click anything and kill me. And because I know he has Ice Shard, Nihilego will die. If I had cured this thing, Nihilego would have won uh, against the Skarmory, no problem. But because of that flinch, I lost the game. And I was so salty um, at the end game. I appreciate upon review and talking to, I think it was Lars. Um, yeah, I misplayed the Slowbro, that's fine, I take that on me, but I still salvaged it to the point where I should have won. And the will o -Wisp miss, I mean, the fact he clicked scored like twice on two unburnt things and got the burn both times. Um, I don't think I clicked scored, but like, you know, I probably wouldn't have got any. The fact he, he got he got a crit as well with the Ice Shard, which didn't matter at all, I don't think. Um, but, you know, it's just at that point where it's, it tilts you. And I was so incredibly salty after that game because... I would I would have won. I should have won that game. Quite frankly, I should have won. But that ice that um, ice will crash flinch literally won in the game. He would have lost otherwise. So yeah, um, good game. Dark. I mean, <laughs> getting back over it. I'm salty. Uh, that was my game. Uh, I know it was my game, but I can't be mad at Dark because it wasn't his fault. He he did what he had to do. He had to click ice ice will crash, knowing that he needed the flinch to win, and showdown rewarded him, and he got it. So yeah. Um, God, I am salty right now, even though this is like a week on. Um, guys, if you did enjoy this video, sorry if I did again for like the minute of time, like I'm saying, get a bit too salty in this game for your liking. Um, but I hope you understand why. Next week, we're against Brandon and the Ports Meowth. Um, he's got a terrifying squad. He keeps telling me I'm going to 6 0 him. Um, it's a bit of reverse psychology, I'm sure, going on there. But yeah, guys, make sure, like I said, if you uh, did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Go check out Dark. Uh, his all link his links will be in the description below. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye.